the Bokuso Box. Genshin Impact 2.5's key gadget for their main event, the Three Realms Gateway Offering. Pretty much everything within this version of Enkonomiya requires it. Find a puzzle? Use the Bokuso Box. There's an enemy you can't defeat? The Bokuso Box. Unlock waypoints? Bokuso Box. Complete quests? Box. You get the picture. Now, let's toss this box aside and ponder a moment. Do we actually need the Bokuso Box? Or rather, what all are we able to achieve without using it? It's time to literally think outside the box. And if that line of thinking suits you, there's a plethora of related content on my channel. From glitches to experiments, out of bounds and lore, there's a lot to choose from. So do be sure to subscribe and check it out. To start, we certainly can defeat enemies without the box. Yes, even those the game says requires the Bokuso box, the invincible enemies surrounded by the darkness. Unless they're an Abyss Mage. But more on that in a bit. Let's begin with Hilly Churls, with our star of the show being Klee. Klee's charged attack rightfully sends enemies flying. Even mammoth enemies like Lara Churls are juggled with ease. All we have to do to defeat these enemies is send them back to the place their power is coming from, the Abyss. Lure them to the cliff. <laughs> And... Down, down they go. You'll notice we get character experience and that Mora flies over to us, confirming that the enemy is indeed defeated. Their drops are also conveniently placed at the enemy's original location. It's worth noting that sometimes this isn't so easy. I actually had an Axe Meta Troll take over 30 charged attacks from Klee before it flinched and flew off a cliff during which I was sent off the cliff half a dozen times. This was probably a fluke, however, as it usually only takes two or three to flinch them. But what about other enemies? Rift Hounds meet a similar fate, able to be juggled and tossed off a cliff by Klee. As for the rest of the assortment of enemies down here, well, not all can be sent airborne. Those types would be the machines, the four-legged ones, Ruin Guards or Graders, and especially those snake-like robots that only ever move after burrowing into the ground. Quite the pickle. Come on, come on, don't despawn, don't despawn. We're almost there. Yes! It works! Victory! Yup. Just push them off the cliff with your character after luring them to the edge. It can help to use a shield and healer to stave off both knockback and damage you're otherwise likely to accrue. Even the big ruin grader locked up near the Evernight Temple can be lured and dropped off the cliff. Although, be careful with this one. If the big guy instead sends you for a tumble, he'll no longer activate when you respawn. This locks the puzzle until you reload the area by teleporting away. Okay, and the husks? Just send them flying. The lot of them are in the same boat as Hilly Churls and Rift Hounds. Finally, the Abyss Mage. Despite dropping their shield and sending them hurtling off the cliff, these guys don't get KO'd. We've all probably witnessed Abyss Mages vanish and reappear at their original location with full HP, sometimes without much reason as to why. I mean, we weren't far from their original location. Of course, this can happen with other enemies too, but for some reason Abyss Mages trigger it more frequently. I imagine this is the reason why they cannot be defeated in this manner, or they have a special flag that does not allow them to be defeated by voiding out. I suppose for an Abyss creature, it makes a lot of sense that they cannot be defeated by banishing them to the void. It probably comes as no surprise that this is the bulk of what we can do without the Bokuso box. Puzzles, quests, combat challenges, and some treasure chests are all locked behind the box's mechanic without any way around it. However, just being able to defeat enemies like this opens up nearly half the event's treasures to be gathered without the box. It's a neat challenge, and certainly one way to make use of the event's 40-day availability. Let's bring the Bokuso box back into the mix. How far can we get with it at level 0? The main quest is still off limits, as it requires the box to be level 1. The towers are surrounded on all sides by a barrier. 
That includes the top, which is a dome that forces your character to slide off. Although, I suppose I did not check beneath the towers. There's a chance that the barrier doesn't extend below the surface. At level 0, we can complete upwards of 80% of the event. Clever use of the replenish stones and coral butterflies are needed to achieve most of this progress. For example, with the two ruin guards underground south of the Evernight Temple, we can grab coral butterflies outside and rush through the ruins to dispel their darkness. This is because all enemy darkness can be dispelled at level 0, no matter where they're located on the map. Puzzles are much the same way. Using food buffs and animal resonance, along with the Bokuso art to strengthen stamina, reaching puzzles as far away as Date's Labyrinth is possible. Now, I imagine I missed a treasure chest or two, perhaps even a puzzle, but this was the progress I made at level 0. 5 of 6 Bokuso arts, and 1,250 sigils. For reference, one needs 1,500 sigils total to max out the Bokuso box at level 15. Not bad! Finally, with the Bokuso box at level 1, we have access to the main quest. It's no real surprise the first void tower can be cleared with ease. After all, clearing it at level 1 fits within the scope of intended gameplay. The second tower can also be cleared at level 1. With the same buff setup used to reach Date's Labyrinth, we can glide our way to the portal and rush through the second tower's area to make it with just enough energy for a single use of the Bokuso box, activating the second tower. Unfortunately, we're not activating the third tower at level 1. Short of some way to desync the drain of the Bokuso box, it seems impossible. For the record, disconnecting does not work. The game will take a lump sum of energy from the box, equal to what would have drained once connection is re-established. With the same buffs as before, and a starting point atop the Dainichi Mikoshi, I think it's possible to do so at level 5. The ideal party would include Kaya, Amber, Shao, and another Animo type for resonance and 20% stamina drain reduction on sprinting, gliding, and climbing. With Xiao as lead for access to a skill that marginally speeds up gliding, the Red Feather Fan would need to be used before takeoff, and immediately switch to the Bokuso box once its duration ends. We'd go straight to the portal, and then Kaya's up. With speedrunner strats I truthfully don't have, one would need to rush to the stone, take the energy, and then follow this path around the left side of the island, perfectly timing Kaya's jump sprints to maximize speed. Once up top, we would need to use the Red Feather Fan and Shao to double sprint lunge on the cliff sides, use his skill midair, and then glide the remainder of the way to the tower. This, in many aspects, was a short trip into the ways I play Genshin Impact. For those who quickly grow bored of the game after plowing through new content with insanely overpowered characters, an approach like this can be a breath of fresh air. Super fun! 10 out of 10 would come again. But uh, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't also frustrating at times. Before we wrap up, a quick aside regarding the limited time world quest down here, the Bunkoku Enigma. This quest is peculiar in that it seems to function similarly to the mirror library we visit at the end of the normal Ekonomiya world quest, Collection of Dragons and Snakes. We gather these stone tablets from various parts of the map, sometimes using clever methods to bypass the puzzle gates and just grab the tablets. Once we have all of them and complete the sliding puzzle, a hole opens in the floor. When we jump down, it appears to be a different version of the room. Just how the mirror library is a different version of the normal library. The wall isn't broken, and it's later revealed that there's a cell down here. Unfortunately, it only takes a simple camera clip to see that this new location isn't a new location at all. We've never actually moved. When the hole to the floor is opened, a new wall loads in over the broken one. This is why the quest resets if you leave the room instead of jumping down the hole. Likewise, climbing back up the hole brings about the same result. This is all noticeable without glitching, too, as completing the quest causes the room to be stuck in the new version. The wall outside will be sealed, meaning you have to drop down the hole to return there. It's honestly a bummer. The mirror library that takes you above the map to a height of 10 times that of Dainichi Mikoshi is the sort of awesomeness I expected again. I suppose like the Raiden Shogun, 
Awesomeness cannot strike twice. This is Musashi, signing off. Till next time.